Hey there, we are live from Times Square. I am Henry. It is Wednesday. Happy New Comic Book Day to you. Of course, it is a big week this week. We've got some fantastic holidays coming up. Thanksgiving's tomorrow, and then this Friday is Black Friday. So, of course, you know, there's going to be a lot of holiday shopping. We hope that you guys will swing by our stores. All three of our stores are going to be having 25% off everything in store until noon, which is a great deal because it's literally everything. Then if you guys can't make it in until noon, it's still 20% off all weekend long, so there's still great deals. You can also shop with us online where we have up to 75% off, which is insane, absolutely insane. But you know what's insane? More insane than anything, it's this week. The number of books, the great titles that we have coming out for you. There's some amazing stuff. Of course, you can see I'm all you know, bedazzled with uh, some Doomsday Clock stuff. We'll, of course, talk about that. But let's go through and let's talk about some of the books from this week. First off, we've got some staff selections, and we got right off the bat, we got Doomsday Clock, first book we're talking about from Vic. Very cool. He's showing off the lenticular here. We'll show off a little bit more of that later. Then we have Andrew's pick of the week, which is God Complex, issue number two. We have Star Wars, number 39, from Nelson. Mike is old school kind of guy, so he loves seeing Etrigan the Demon in Hell on Earth, uh, issue number one. And then, look at that, Double Dip and V is a big fan of the Doomsday Clock as well. I mean, can you blame him? It's pretty cool, pretty exciting. So now, as we get started, we're going to hit Dark Horse. And we have, of course, the brand new issue of Angel, season 11, issue number 11. A couple different covers here. Some really cool stuff if you are a fan of the Angel series. It's a great time to be a fan. Then as we continue down, we've got the brand new issue of Bank Shot from Alex DeCampi and Criss Cross. I always love what they do with the covers for the series. And then we have the brand new issue of Department H from Matt Kent. Very cool series. We also have, of course, Sherlock Frankenstein and the Legion of Evil. This is a special edition from Local Comic Shop Day. So, of course, this is a spinoff of the Black Hammer series from Jeff Lemire and David Rubin. So if you're a fan of black hammer and you want to check out a side book pick up this special edition that we have in store and we also have issue two of the hit series this is really great because if you guys haven't checked out black hammer it's been one of the most talked about books in the comic book world these last couple years and it's one of the finest things that dark source has dark horse has to offer now closing us off we also have the brand new issue of tomb raider and what's that Right there, that's issue number one. That means this is your chance to get in on the action for Tomb Raider before the very exciting new movie la next year. I'm very excited, and this is a great way to start off with the franchise. Now, as we hit DC, of course, this is a very big week for DC. We start off with a brand new issue of Batgirl. This is the end of the Summer of Lies, and there's some really great stuff here, a couple different covers. I do want to go back and just show this off because I love this cover. And I really love what they're doing with the storyline, bringing Barbara Gordon and Dick Grayson together for a great adventure. Of course, they are one of the classic, quintessential DC couples. And it's great to see that being honored in the DC Rebirth line. Now, moving down, we have the brand new issue of Batman Beyond with this really cool Dave Johnson cover. One of my favorite covers of the entire week show off some of the art here it's been really cool dan jurgens is doing a great job and if you haven't been checking batman beyond out you are missing out and also there's a new costume in this issue so very cool whenever characters get a, a little upgrade to their suit now moving on we've got fall of the batman part one in detective comics issue 969 wow that's a big number and this series will make you say wow over and over because james tynan has been doing a really great job on the book Focusing on the Bat family, and of course, you actually get to see the whole Bat family is really coming back together. But united for the last time, what's going to happen? The story is called Fall of the Batman, so you know something horrible is going to happen to somebody. And you know, things were looking so good after, you know, the last story. But, you know, so it goes. So as we move on, we've got the brand new issue of Gotham City Garage. Very cool. If you want like a Mad Max version of the ladies of the DC Universe, pick it up. It really is cool. It really is worth it. And they're based on some amazing designs from the DC uh, Gotham City Garage statues the DC Collectibles puts out. Now as we continue, we've got issue number 32 of Harley Quinn. And it is not a happy issue. Uh, Vote Harley has been a really fun storyline from Amanda Connor and Jimmy Palmiotti, but I mean, you can just tell. You look at this cover, it's not a happy time today. 
It is sad, Harley sad, sad clown everywhere. It, nobody wants a sad clown, and I'm sure Harley wishes things were different herself. Now, as we move on, we have the brand new issue of Nightwing, the New Order, a very cool Elseworlds tale from uh, Kyle Higgins and Trevor McCarthy. It's a great read. They've done some really amazing books over the years, and I am really loving what they're doing with this. It's, of course, like an alternate future version of the DC Universe, and it's great. It's really cool. It's like, you know, it's kind of like Nightwing in Secret Empire almost. Very cool stuff. Now, moving on, we have the brand new issue of Blue Beetle, issue number 15 from Chris Sebulba. Uh, some really interesting stuff here. Of course, Jaime Reyes is one of the cool young characters that DC has spent some time focusing on these last couple years. So I'm really enjoying seeing what they have to offer. And Chris Sebulba jumping onto the title has really given it a breath of fresh air. And I'm really digging it. And then we've got Etric and the Demon is back in the Demon. Hell is Earth. Some really interesting stuff here. I'm a sucker for Brad Walker on art. And if there was a character he was born to draw, it is definitely Etric and the Demon. Literally open up to a random page and you can just see how amazing the art on this is. Which I really appreciate. Brad Walker is, I think he's an amazing artist. He just does some great work flipping through some of this. You can see his really unique caricatures in there. And I really dig what they're doing with the series. But of course, you can see it out of the corner of your eye. You can see the talk of the town, the big book. The one everybody on the planet is dying to read. Doomsday Clock issue number one. Now, this is huge. And I don't, I, you know, sometimes I say the word huge. Sometimes I talk about things. And I'm like, yeah, this is pretty cool, you know. It's actually, like, not that huge. Doomsday Clock is, like, gargantuan. Doomsday Clock is the biggest book that DC has put out in years. It is a monumental feat because it is effectively Watchmen 2. And I did not think that was a possible thing that would ever exist in the market and Jeff Johns and Gary Frank really handle the book with the respect that you would want. They treat it with great respect. And I'm going to flip through a little bit because I'd be a fool if I didn't show off some of this art by Gary Frank. Because he is handing in easily some of the best work of his career. And you can see that they're handling it so well. Evoking classic feels with using shots of, you know, slow pan out, using a nine panel grid in a lot of these shots. Stuff like that is a subtle touch, but it really shows that they are paying attention and they're doing this book for the fans and they're not just doing this lightly. So it's a really cool release. I wanna flip through, I wanna show you everything, but if I show you everything, then I spoil the surprise for you. But it's really worth it and it really is cool. And it's got a great last page that makes me really curious to see how this plays out. I'm not going to tell you it starts with a bang. I'm not going to tell you it's the craziest, most explosive action, adventure, drama you've ever read. No, it's character driven. It is taking a slow beat to immerse yourself in the world of the Doomsday Clock. And it's great. And I'm really happy. We had hundreds of people coming by last night for our midnight release of it. That tells you how excited the world is for this book. Pick it up. You're going to, it's, if you pick up one book this year, this is the one. So yeah, pretty cool. Now as we move on, we've got one of my personal favorites. We've got the brand new issue of The Flash, issue number 35, Black Hole Rising. A couple different covers here. I really dig that Howard Port is doing a lot of these covers. I think that's great. And the series has been great. Joshua Williamson has done a really great job creating a vivid world for Barry Allen, showing off some different powers for him lately, as it were, in the Black Hole Rising storyline. We now get to see him spending some time with Wally West and I think that's great it's a classic uh, relationship and a really cool direction for the series to go in if you're not checking out Flash jump in Black Hole Rising this is only part two of the story pick up 34 pick up 35 and you know enjoy the run now as we move on we've got the brand new issue of Hellblazer showing off a couple different covers here always some cool magic adventures going on here and it's a brand new storyline, the Bardo score, so if you haven't been reading Hellblazer, now you can. See? It's that easy. Just pick it up. Give it a shot, you know? Now we'll move on and we'll talk about some of the great graphic novels that are coming out this week. And first off, we have Gregory Suicide, an OGN. So it's got the full story from Dark Horse, some really cool stuff here. And then we've got The Art of Wolfenstein 2, the new Colossus. Wolfenstein's awesome. Really cool. I mean, you get to run around and you get to fight Nazis. Who doesn't love that, you know? It's great. Moving on, we have the hardcover collection that just came out for the Batman and the Shadow from Scott Snyder, Steve Orlando, Riley Rosmo, 
and it is a really cool read. It's got two of the classic pulp characters, two really fan favorites in an adventure together, uniting. It's cool. And now there's a sequel story going on, so if you like this, you can check out The Shadow and Batman. Not to be confused, but some very great stuff nonetheless. And then we have the hardcover edition of Batman Year Two. That's right, not Year One, but Year Two. Now this is great because this is a book that has not been in print for a long time, and Year Two shows off some classic adventures of Batman when he's a little bit wiser, but he's not that wise because it's only Year Two, so he's still pretty much a rookie. It's like you know your sophomore season, you're doing all right, but you can still be you know knocked down, and Batman definitely gets knocked around a bit here as he faces off against the Reaper. As we move on, we've got the paperback collection of Challengers of the Unknown, which I love because it's Jack Kirby. Show off the cool spine here. I love this purple. Of course, Challengers of Known have those classic purple costumes where it's just literally a purple jumpsuit. And I like it. I like what they're doing here. I, I just, I'm so happy that Jack Kirby's books are being reprinted like this. Then we have Superman American Alien, much more contemporary from Max Landis and a, a ton of different artists. I mean, you've got Nick Dragata on here, you've got Jai Lee on here. You've got some amazing artists doing some really cool stuff here, focusing on adventures throughout Superman's life. And I will say that this reads completely on its own. So if you haven't been reading Superman regularly, you don't need to. You can just jump in and read his stories throughout his life. Then we also have a classic collection, unlike any other. We've got the Golden Age Wonder Woman, Volume 1. Now, this is really cool because, of course, these are the classic comics from the 40s. So there's a lot of really cool adventures for you to check out if you want to read the original stories of Diana of Themyscira. And then we have Fables, the Deluxe Edition, Book 15. Oh, my God, 15 books of Fables. Well, you know, because Fables is awesome. It deserves 15 prestigious hardcovers. Now we're going to move down and we're going to talk about some more of the new releases hitting stands this week, including Justice League of America, Surgical Strike, you can see him right there on the cover, Prometheus, face to face with the Justice League of America, specifically Vixen. And Vixen, I think this is great, it's a really good spotlight on her, really good to show what an amazing hero she is, and this book has been really great. Steve Orlando's been doing a really good job. Then as we move on, We've got the Commandi Challenge, issue number 11. Show off a couple different covers here. Commandi Challenge has been one of my favorite books of the entire year. This is issue 11. It's only got 12 chapters, so now we are getting really close because this is the penultimate chapter of the adventures of Commandi in this weird world, this horrible dystopia where everything's gone horribly awry. And how awesome is it? Walt Simonson does the art for this issue. Of course, Walt Simon is one of the most legendary creators in the history of comics ever, and he's drawing giant space gorillas. That's awesome. That, that sells me right there. Walt Simonson drawing giant space gorillas. That is all you need. You have my money. Take it. I'm super excited. Then as we move on, we've got the brand new issue of the Rough and Ready show from the Hanna-Barbera line. And we also have the brand new issue of Suicide Squad. A couple different covers here. Some cool stuff. I like this Wallace Partaccio one. And it's a really cool read. It's the secret history of Task Force X. So we're getting a bit of a reflection on the original Suicide Squad, which I think is cool because I like that they're acknowledging continuity. Moving on, we've got the aftermath of the Oz effect in Action Comics issue 992. Dan Jurgens, Rob Williams, and some amazing art by Will Conrad. This is really cool, and oh, I really want to show you the last page. Uh, love this alternate cover as well. But, oh, the last page of this, this issue is great. This, this issue made me super happy, and it's really cool because it actually shows a lot of character moments for Superman after the Oz effect because things did not go super awesome for him on an emotional level in that. He kind of got, like, you know, given a hard time, and now he has to reflect on his entire life. So check it out if you want to see Superman just really sad. Then we have the brand new issue of Teen Titans in issue number 14 of the series from Ben Percy. It's doing some cool new stuff with the return of Kid Flash. Very exciting. Of course, Kid Flash has been running around with Deathstroke for a while now. So now we get to see him coming back to the team, report on what he has found out. Moving on, we also have the brand new issue of Wonder Woman, issue number 35. Some cool stuff here. Show off that Justice League movie variant by Terry Dodson. And this is a really cool series from James Robinson. Been having a lot of fun. Manuela Lupicino on art for this, so you know it's going to be pretty. 
And the book is really great, following up on some of the plot threads from the Dark Side War. And then we have a couple books from the peripherals of the DC Universe. In Vertigo, we've got Astro City number 49 from Kirk Busiek. And this is a great cover, Alex Ross, of course. Then we have the brand new issue of Doom Patrol from Gerard Way and Nick Darrington. A couple different covers here. I have been loving what they're doing with Doom Patrol. It's really great. It's like a love letter to the classic series, but it's completely doing its own thing. So check it out. And then we have the new series, Imaginary Friends. And this is warped. This is twisted. It's got some really cool stuff going on. And Tim Seale is doing a really great job exploring a brand new series. So check it out. Now we move on and we hit some of the independent books for the week. And we've got Betty and Veronica Vixens to kick it off from Archie. A couple different covers here. I really like this Robert Hack cover. I think that's really snazzy. Show off a couple of different books. And it's great to see Betty and Veronica getting some spotlight on their own. Who needs Archie anyway? He's barely worth your time. You know, you got Betty and Veronica. Who needs who needs Archie? Whatever. Uh, <laughs> I'm a Jughead guy. Then we move on and we uh, get the brand new issue of Mighty Morphin Power Rangers from Kyle Higgins. You guys heard me raving about Kyle Higgins before because he really is a great writer. I really do like what he brings to the table. And I love what they're doing with the Power Rangers book. Then we have the brand new Tales from Johnny Wander, local comic shop day from Oni, which is very cool if you want to check out an exclusive book. You're not going to find this in most shops, but you will find it here if you swing on by. And then we have XO Manowar issue number nine from Matt Kent and Clayton Crane. And Clayton Crane is doing some crazy art on this book. If you've never seen the art of Clayton Crane, here, let me, let me give you a little bit of a treat here. Let's flip through this book and let's see what we can find. As we flip through, Clayton Crane draws some crazy imagery, some really interesting sci-fi. Of course, Exo Manowar has a lot of sci-fi in the book and some classic action vibes as well. And a uh, cool ad for Quantum and Woody. I can't wait for that. But really exciting stuff. Clayton Crane does great art. Matt Kent does not know how to write a bad book. He has, I don't think, ever written a bad book. He is amazing. So then we move on and we hit IDW. And IDW launches their week with a brand new issue of Clue, just like the board game, and just as much fun. There's a lot of mystery, a lot of intrigue, and a lot of different culprits that could be horrible, murderous people. But you know, you gotta read and you gotta find out who's, who's the worst one out of them. Then we also have the brand new issue of Saucer State from Paul Cornell. Some cool stuff here, show off a couple different covers. Of course, the sequel to Saucer Country. Or county, sorry. Then we have uh, the brand new issue of Optimus Prime, issue number 13. And we've got Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles and the Ghostbusters 2, issue number 4. This is a team-up between two amazing franchises. And it's, I mean, look, it's the turtles on a pirate ship fighting an army of ghost Vikings. That's awesome. That's silly. That's exactly what you want when you're a kid, you know? That's the kind of adventure you want to go on. Then we also have the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Universe, issue number 16. This is a side book to the main series. So if you're enjoying the main continuity Turtles books, this is great. And there's some Triceraton action in here. And then to close off the IDW picks for the week, we've got the brand new issue of Weird Love. I say brand new, but it's an old reprint of some really cool older stories. And then we also have... Uh, Wormwood, the Gentleman Corpse, Mr. Wormwood goes to Washington. So this is from Ben Templesmith. So you know it's going to be cool because Ben Templesmith is another creator that just has a long-standing history of doing great books. And this is yet another fantastic uh, title. Moving on, we've got the brand new issue of Angelic, issue number three from our friends Cy Spirio and Casper Wingard. If you guys haven't checked this out, it's all ages. It's fun for everybody. It's super pretty. It's super cool. And it's got this cool robot cat and like these, this all, I can't, I can't even tell you all the weird aliens that show up in this series, but it's really cool and it's really delightful and you guys should be checking it out. Now we're going to bump up and we'll talk about a couple of these special collections we have up here. Starting us off, we have Young Terrorists. Now this is a cool lenticular edition. You guys can see that's a real nice lenticular for you guys right there. And then we move on and we have Executive Assistant Iris from uh, Aspen. We have the local comic shop day edition of Four Kids Walk Into a Bank from Tyler Boss and Matt Rosenberg. Some great stuff going on there. Really nice edition. Love that edition, actually. Then we have the graphic canon of Crime and Mystery, number seven. 
We have Van Helsing. We have, oh, this is cool. Uh, we have a crime anthology for 2017, so it's got all these cool little crime stories. That's fun. Uh, I mean, it's the opposite of fun. It's probably really depressing and dark and spooky, but, you know. Then we've got uh, Kolchak, the Night Stalker, looking like Tommy Lee Jones right there, uh, which is kind of great. Uh, we also have uh, Marnie and the Fox, uh, also looking like Tommy Lee Jones, but no, maybe not. Then uh, we've got Orion's Outcast, very cool, from Humanoids. Humanoids always putting out some really cool European books. We've got Snakes and Ladders, not Shoots and Ladders, Snakes and Ladders. Don't confuse them. S snakes are bad. And we also have Roots. Now, these are cool. These are some really nice graphic novels. So if you guys want to check out an indie graphic novel feel, check those out. We also have The Doomsters. <laughs> okay, this is a mouthful. The Doomsters Monolithic Pocket Alphabet. So this is great. This is fun. Cute little book, you know. And then we have the deluxe edition of Secret Weapons from Local Comic Shop Day for Valiant. So that's really cool. Very nice edition. And David Mack cover. So that's amazing. Now we'll move on. And we've got Eternal Empire Volume 1 from Image. And there's some great stuff going on here, collecting the first few issues of the series. And then, because we're just so nice, we've got signed copies of Paper Girls Book 1, in hardcover form from Brian Michael Ben or Brian Michael Bendis, Brian K. Vaughn and Cliff Chang, two amazing creators who joined us a couple weeks ago, had a lot of fun. There's a nice little dedication page. It's all signed on the inside and the nice jacket. It's gorgeous. And this book is amazing. If you haven't read Paper Girls, you're you're crazy. Pick up Paper Girls. It's one of my favorite books on the stands right now. Then we also have the hardcover edition of Sunstone from Sepp and Sedgwick. Some really interesting stuff there. Not for the kids. Then we've got Winnebago Graveyard, the uh, entire series from Steve Niles. And we hit a couple Marvel books as well here with Deadpool Kills the Marvel Universe again, as well as the second volume of Doctor Strange and the Sorcerer Supreme from Robbie Thompson and Javier Rodriguez. Really cool stuff. I really love Doctor Strange and the Sorcerer Supreme. And Deadpool Kills the Marvel Universe again. If you're a Deadpool fan, you're a fool if you are missing out on him literally just taking on everybody and winning because... You know, all he does is win, 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 no matter what. And uh, we go ahead and we continue with the new releases. And we've got the brand new issue of Copperhead, issue number 16. And then we've got some really great signed books. We've got Coyotes by Sean Lewis and Caitlin Yarsky, who you'll remember. They came by a couple weeks ago. They talked with us. They have an amazing book. If you guys haven't checked it out, you definitely should. And then we've got uh, the brand new issue of Elephant Men. But more importantly... It looks like we have off to the side here, we have our, our very own Vic Melendez. Vic, how's it going? It's going good, Henry. How you been? I'm doing uh, quite well. It's a, it's a big week, man. It's a big week. It's a, big week. It's a lot of cool stuff to read this week. I'm very excited. Uh, yeah. what, uh, what piqued your interest? I mean, I saw that you had a Doomsday Clock over there. Clock. Yeah, Doomsday Clock was excellent. Um, loved it. It's, uh, like, I heard everything you were saying. On point. It's everything. It's everything that you mentioned. Um, I will say this. If you've only seen The Watchmen, it's not going to count. Does not count. You gotta read Watchmen. You gotta read Watchmen. They're not going with the movie. You have to read it. If you're gonna read this series, it does help to read Watchmen, not the movie. Yeah, I really do like that. It seems like they're, you know, it, it's like a love letter to it. It's got a lot of the same uh, pacing and the yeah. the voices of. I don't want to say what characters do or do not appear necessarily, True. but they do really capture their voices. Yeah, John. You can tell Johns and the, and Johns and Gary Frank they took this the, the the property itself like they just put everything that they are but the, that they're really good at and they're giving it 100 percent. i'm very excited for each and every issue that's going to be coming out this week for that one um but also when a bigger graveyard i just saw that you uh, pulled out I, yep. I would be amiss if i didn't mention a horror book uh steve niles i love it uh family on vacation just gets attacked in this small town by a group of satanists and you know <laughs> go from there that sounds like a really awful vacation it does it does it feels bad um, I'm excited for Thanos this week because Donnie Cates is finally on it. Him and Jeff Shaw, who did God Country, I've plugged that book a lot. It was one of my favorites for this year, so I'm excited for that. Um, there's a new series that just came out, Void Trip, that I'm also really excited to read. Uh, Kieran Gilling had this really awesome quote that it, it was saying that it takes place in like in an alternate universe where the only Captain America that matters is the one in Easy Rider. So <laughs> right off the bat, yeah, you got me, Kieran. I'll read it. Um, and also... 
I'm out. I've uh, I've submitted my two weeks, so this will be one of the last Wednesdays I am uh, that I'm here giving advice and talking with you. Say it, and so is this your swan song? Is this uh, you want you're 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 leaving us? I, I am unfortunate. I am. Yeah, I've, uh, I'm, I'm moving on, and uh, it's been fun. I've been out, I've enjoyed uh, with Greg, who used to be here, and also with you, just talking about comics, giving advice, having people come and ask for you know what to read, what's really good. Uh, I've enjoyed it all. I'm gonna miss you guys. I'm gonna miss doing this as well. Well, I know that as a result, a direct result of this, we're going to have people ravenously coming straight to you, shaking you down. We're probably actually going to chain you up in the back room, and we'll just have you, you know, sorting through books for all of time. Like, what's, what, hey, what's the read? Uh, what, what's really good? Well, let me just pop in the back for a second. I'll be right back, <laughs> and I'll give you like maybe like 10 or 15 things that they should be reading. Um, yeah, I'm definitely going to miss doing this, so um, best of luck to the next person that comes in. Hopefully, they'll be able to give uh, some good um just mention some good books like I do, and always keep reading indie books. I'll be here as a customer, so if you guys see me, let me know what you're reading, and I can let you know what I'm reading. Well, thank you so much, Vic, and thank you, of course, for, as always, your amazing recommendations, and uh, everybody come by and attack them. I mean, we'll be seeing you. Yeah, you're going to be yeah. here all the time. Yeah, I'm, I'll, if I ever see you doing something, I might, you know, I'll do a pop-up, you know, I'll just jump in, you know, as like a, a crazed customer, not a crazed employee. Yeah. <laughs> well, uh, thanks so much for, uh, for everything, Vic. You're welcome. All right. So now, uh, on that note, we're going to continue. We're going to talk about a couple other cool books that are out. We've got uh, the brand new issue of Gasolina, issue number three, as well as uh, Genius Cartel, issue number four. A couple different covers here. This one's actually really cool because it's, uh, of course, showing off some uh, Witchblade action, which is very cool for the series. Now we move on, and we have uh, Ghost Station Zero, Part 4. Of course, this is Codename Babushka Mission. Uh, Anthony Johnson, who did uh, Atomic Blonde, he does this book as well. So if you, uh, I mean, you know, Atomic Blonde is a movie name, but, you know, Cold to City is the book. But this is great. Check it out. Really cool stuff. And it's called Codename Babushka, so that's already, like, an instant sell for me. Then we have the brand-new issue of Glitter Bomb, the fame game from Jim Zub, as well as... Uh, God Complex. Now, so we have issue number two, which we saw Andrew put as his pick of the week. We also have issue one. So if you want to see what all the buzz is about, check out Top Cow's brand new series. That I mean, it's you know really cool stuff. Andrew's got amazing taste, so I trust that this is phenomenal. Now we'll move on. We've got the brand new issue of The Hard Place, which is very cool because it is a crime series. That's a lot of fun. You get to see some cool car chases, some awesome stuff. If you like Baby Driver, this is kind of in that same vein of just cool action adventure. Then we also have Maestro's issue number one. And this is a local comic shop day exclusive variant, which is really cool. You can actually see they really went the extra mile. It actually has a raised, I don't know if you could see that. Uh, maybe you could see like the shine on that. But this is actually some raised uh, titling on here, which is great. It looks really, really pretty. And then we also have the brand new issue of Rat Queens from Curtis Weeb. Rat Queens is great. Rat Queens is so fun. It's a D&D &D campaign for, like, all the foul mouth, you know, adults in the world. Definitely check it out. It's a lot of fun for a fantasy series. We also have the brand new issue of Redneck from Donny Cates. You know, Vic's a big fan. And with art like this on the cover, you can tell that the book is going to be super cool. Show off a couple of these different covers. Some really interesting stuff going on in Redneck. Then we also have the brand new issue of Savage Dragon, issue 228. 228! That's insane! Very cool stuff. Then we have Snot Girl, issue 8. So, you know, it's only 220 more to go, and then it's Savage Dragon, right? But this is a really great series from Leslie Hung and Brian Lee O'Malley. Some great stuff, of course. Brian Lee O'Malley, known best for his uh, Scott Pilgrim books over the years. Check this out. It's really great. Leslie Hung's art is really fantastic. Then we have uh, Ray Fox's Underwinter. The brand new issue of that. And then we have Void Trip by Ryan Sullivan and Plaid Klaus. And what's this? We've got right here, we have a wild Plaid Klaus. How's it going? Hey, man. It's going good. Good to, good to be here. So, uh, of course, this is, a, this is a big week for you. Oh, yeah. You got, a, you got your book that is flying off the shelves right now, literally flying off the shelves. Uh, what can you tell us about Void Trip? Well, if you like uh, psychedelic road trips that take place in space with... Um, the demiurge like characters chasing down our heroes. You, you might dig this book. That is, that is a, a hell of a hook. <laughs> so there's some crazy stuff. So you've got, so what can you tell us? We got right here, we only have a, there's only like two humans in this, right? Our leads? Yeah, and supposedly the last two humans, and we're not sure what happens. So as the series progresses, you might, you see these guys trying to make their way to the promised land. 
So it's the last remnants of humanity traveling through space. They've got crazy eyes. There's like crazy. Here, uh, why don't you flip through? Maybe show us off a couple. I'll grab this out of your hand. Show off a couple of uh, your favorite pages that, of course, you know, you did all the art. You did the penciling, the inking, the colors, and everything. Yep, yep. So here's the first space bar that they make their way into. Um, it opens up on a dusty road scene. Um, just trying to pull the vibe of those, like, uh, Beat Generation, mm -hmm. Jack Kerouac on the road. Um, Jack Kerouac and space is not two things I would have put together, like, ever. I think that's super awesome. No, yeah, I mean, we were... We were talking about doing like space hobos, people trying to like backpack <laughs> across, you know, space. And then it evolved more into this sort of like hippie inspired road trip trying to find uh, the perfect state of euphoria. So, well, that sounds super awesome. It's crazy. And it's uh, really I mean, it's a really pretty read. I will say completely objectively, this is a gorgeous book. And uh, also, you know. I think it's really well written. I think it's. I'm really excited to see the twists and turns for this because when you say psychedelic road trip through space, there's kind of no way that's going to go the straight and narrow. Yeah, and it's actually it's a pretty uh, fun book considering it's like an existential crushing book, <laughs> <laughs> but it's got a lot of uh, humor in it as well. So we've got existential crisis. We've got some fun humor. We've got crazy monsters and Jack Kerouac. Something for the whole family, basically. So basically, no matter who you are, Void Trip has something. Yeah, and the title itself is sort of a juxtaposition because it's like staring into the void of nothing or taking the trip, you know, literally tripping. So it's like, you know, glasses half full, half empty. That's amazing. That is that is so fantastic. That is a really interesting uh, way to frame this. I'm really excited. And uh, thanks so much for stopping by to talk to us oh, about yeah. it. Appreciate it. Yeah. Void Trip. Come get it. <laughs> Well, very cool. Well, thanks so much. Right. Now, uh, we'll continue down. Of course, Void Trip sounds amazing. I'm super curious to check that out. Then we also have the brand new issue of uh, Warframe uh, from Image Comics as well. And issue number 25 of Wayward. There's a couple different covers here. I really like a lot of the covers on Wayward. Very pretty series. Very cool stuff from Jim Zub. Then we'll move on and we hit Marvel and of course, Marvel Legacy is rolling out across the line, so there's a lot of really cool books, such as Black Panther. And in this storyline, called Claw Stand Supreme, look at how cool that cover is. That's great. Showing the Claw Master of Sound, you know, his visual effect, but juxtaposed with uh, Black Panther, and that's awesome. That's really cool. I'm really digging that. But before we talk about everything, let's talk about these collections. Let's let's get those and talk about that. So first off, we've got Generations, the entire Generations line. These are 10 different one-shots focusing on 10 different amazing legacies of the Marvel Universe. You can see this gorgeous Alex Ross art, and you get to see just about everybody. You can see Marvel and Captain Marvel. You get to see the different Novas over the years. You get to see Sam Wilson teaming up with Steve Rogers, and you get to see the best creators of comics working together. Then as we move on, we've got all new Guardians of the Galaxy, Volume 1, Communication Breakdown. I love that they called it Communication Breakdown. That's great. That's one of my favorite Zeppelin songs. Uh, really cool stuff here. If you haven't been reading it, Jerry Dugan does an amazing job on the series with Aaron Cooter and Marcus Toe on art. Then we move on, and we've got I Am Groot from Christopher Hastings, a fun book that you can hand off to the kids. You know, if they're big baby Groot fans, you can check out I Am Groot. Then this is something for everybody, everybody under the sun. Planet Hulk in the local comic shop day special edition. So this is a special hardcover edition of the book, and it's got this amazing cover by Nick Bradshaw that has never been seen before, never been used before for this book. Some really cool stuff there. If you haven't read Planet Hulk, it's one of the best Hulk stories of all time. Then we have the second volume of Infamous Iron Man from Michael Bendis and Alex Maleev, as well as Nick Fury. From James Robinson and ACO, artist credit only. Very humble artist, but very talented. My God, that's one of the prettiest books that I've seen come out this entire year. Some crazy stuff. Then we also have the first volume of the new Darth Vader series, Imperial Machine from Charles Sewell and Giuseppe Comicoli. Really cool stuff there. If you want to see what happened between Revenge of the Sith and A New Hope, how did he become this horrible murdering machine? Well, there you go. That's the book that tells you everything. Then we have Ultimates 2. Volume 2 from Al Ewing. Some really cool stuff here. Of course, this was part of it ties in with Secret Empire, and part of it uh, just tells crazy sci-fi stories with some, like, it really puts everything into perspective. Then we have Thor Ragnarok, behind-the-scenes hardcover book. 
And then we've got a couple collections that I'm really excited about. We've got Venom and Carnage Unleashed, so two classic 90s characters facing off with one another, as well as X-Men Blue Volume 2. Now, this does tie in with Secret Empire, but you don't need to have read Secret Empire in order to jump into the storyline. Some really cool stuff here from Cullen Bunn. Now, moving back down, we've got the brand new issue of Captain Marvel from Margaret Stoll. Some really interesting stuff here as we explore the dark origins of the character. Of course, we know Carol Danvers, you know, got her powers off of a genetic machine that gave her the imprint of Captain Marvel of the Kree, his power set onto her. Some cool stuff. But how does Black Widow fit into all this? And this Phil Noto cover is awesome because I love Phil Noto. Then we have a reprinted edition of Champions issue number 13. So if you want to check out that Marvel Legacy storyline, you can jump in. That's crossover with Avengers. Very cool stuff. And then we also have Guardians of the Galaxy, the Telltale series, issue number five. A couple different covers here. One, of course, doing a direct reference to the video game. But I really like this Dave Nakayama cover because he draws a mean Thanos. Awesome stuff here from Fred Van Lente and Salva Espin. Then as we move on, we've got Return to Planet Hulk. Now this is a brand new storyline for Marvel Legacy. This is a reprinted edition, second printing. So if you guys didn't get your hands on it the first time, now is your chance. And then we have the brand new issue of Invincible Iron Man. But who's missing from this picture? Why, it's Iron Man himself. So where in the world is Tony Stark? The search for Tony Stark continues in issue 594 of the series. It's Brian Michael Bendis. It's Stefano Caselli. It's Alex Maleev. It's amazing. It's great. It's super cool stuff. Then we have the brand new issue of Luke Cage, or should I say Luke has been caged. Of course, the storyline is a play on words, and it is definitely some hard times for Luke. Really enjoying what David Walker is doing with the series. And I really like the creative way that they fit in the names on that really interesting stuff. Then we'll move on, and we've got Monsters Unleashed issue number seven. That's a reprint of the first part of the Marvel Legacy storyline, but then we also have the brand new issue as well. Issue number eight, Fin Fang Fatal. Okay, that's crazy. I'm intrigued. We're seeing some crazy fights here with some classic Marvel monsters, and I love it. Moving on, we've got the brand new issue of Moon Girl and Devil Dinosaur. So there he is right there on the cover. But, of course, you know, things have been a little uh, rocky, as they were. And now we see that the Human Torch and the Thing are popping in for a visit in the storyline called Fantastic Three. You know it's going to be cool. we got a great lenticular cover here as we start this new story for moon girl and devil dinosaur you can see right there some cool stuff going on we also have the brand new issue of punisher the platoon if you guys checked out punisher on netflix and you really dug how horribly depressed the man is just like the ptsd and how terrible his life was and all these things well read this and you'll be equally depressed so you know it's great, it's cool, and it's a really good read. And it's Garth Ennis, who, of course, is one of the most well-known writers of Punisher literally ever. Then we have the brand-new issue of Royals, issue number 11, Fall, Fire from Heaven storyline, as they uh, meet the progenators. Uh, some really interesting stuff as well. And something I really enjoyed, Silver Sable and the Wild Pack, issue number 36. But don't worry, it's a one-shot. It is all you need to know about the character in one issue it's great silver and bold is the name of the story and it really is cool it's a great adventure with silver sable some great like spy mercenary vibes going on silver sable is a really cool character who's been in the pages of spider-man recently but now getting to see her in the pages of her own book again is great because of course she had a very fun series in the 90s i know i've got some friends who are huge silver sable fiends and they're super excited for this, and I can't blame them because it's awesome. It's a really good read. It's great. Paula Sakara's art is really great on it. Then we'll move on, and we've got Spider-Gwen issue number 25. It is a reprint edition. And we also have Amazing Spider-Man Renew Your Vows issue number 13, eight years later. Oh, they grow up so fast, you know? And now we get to see Peter Parker not just as, you know, some young, young hip-happening dad, now he's got a teenage daughter, and Jody Hauser jumps onto the book to tell some startling stories with the life of the entire Spider family. Some really cool stuff here. How will Peter and Mary Jane tackle having a teenage daughter in their lives? I, I don't know. i got to read it. 
Then we have uh, the new issue of Spider-Man Deadpool from Robbie Thompson and Chris Bacalo. If you guys read the first one, you know Chris Bacalo has a natural grasp on these characters and really does some amazing art. Check it out. Robbie Thompson is amazing as well. I love him. Then we have the brand new issue of Star Wars. We've got a couple different covers, of course. The John Tyler Christopher covers are classic at this point for the action figure covers. And then we've got the regular as well uh, with Kieran Gillen and Salvador La Roca. And we got Thanos issue number 13. You heard Vic talking about it earlier. Very exciting stuff here as we get to see Donny Cates and Jeff Shaw doing some amazing stuff with the Mad Titan. The storyline is called Thanos Wins. That is not a good like that is not a good thing to hear i don't want to hear that thanos won because if thanos won that means that everybody died so i'm very curious to see how it plays out i like that homage as well of course you know hearkening back to secret wars then we have mighty thor issue number 700 the death of the mighty thor uh jason aaron russell dauderman and like 50 different people work on this issue and it's great it's second printing it's a really good read 5.99 worth it 100 percent worth it great time then we have the brand new issue of All New Wolverine, Orphans of X, continues in issue number 27 of the series from Tom Taylor and Juan Cabal. Really good stuff, and it's got Dakin in it, and I, I love Dakin. I just, I love him. I can't help it. Then we have the brand new issue of Cable with the newer mutants. Ed Brisson's been doing a good job, and this cover is really cool. We get to see Celine and Cable cuddling up, and that can't be good for, like, anybody, and it's clearly not good for Cable's health because he's not looking great there. Then we also have the brand new issue of Generation X from Christina Strain. Uh, very cool stuff. Issue number nine, and it's Husk, and I love Husk. She is super underrated. She's a great character. I love her as a character, and I'm really happy to see her jumping into this book. And then we've got a brand new storyline in X-Men Gold. Issue number 16, The Negative Zone War. And it looks like the X-Men are wearing some new fatigues, and they're in a brand new storyline. Mark Guggenheim has been doing a great job on the book. If you haven't been checking it out, you're missing out on one of the coolest books you can possibly find with the X-Men in it. So that's it. That's the end of the week. It's a good week, right? There's some great stuff. There's some really good recommendations. You guys got to check out Void Trip. And a special shout out to Plaid Klaus for jumping in and talking to us about the book. Absolutely crazy what goes on in it. And of course, Doomsday Clock. I mean, come on, Doomsday Clock. You guys got to be here. You, you see me all decked out. We've got shirts. We've got some pins while supplies last, and I'm really excited to just see how fans respond to it because it's been wanted for so long, and fans are really, it seems like everybody's really happy with it, and that's what's really important. So thank you guys for tuning in. Remember that this weekend is Black Friday, so we're going to be having some big sales up to 25% or twenty five off up until noon on Friday, and then 20% off for the rest of the weekend. Some really cool stuff, and 75% off on the website so that's an amazing sale there's some great stuff great books it's a great week hopefully you guys will come by and uh have a good thanksgiving everybody